Well, amidst the market malaise, there have been some breakout sectors and stocks. And to talk about that, we've still got Francis Swardelsky. I love this because you're always finding these under the radar areas of the market that are maybe just poised to do super well. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> you see my I, know, I really sold this <laughs> high for you. Uh, well, let's talk about, uh, I think we've got a chart. We'll talk, talk small cap first. Sure. Uh, small cap does have a tendency to outperform uh, during this time of the year. Mind you, during this time of the year, markets were great. But I just like kind of that rounded bottom you see from the uh, beginning of 2002. Uh, 2022, excuse me, to now. So this is versus large cap using the uh, S&P 500. Which means when it's going up, small cap it's, is yeah. And it's been going down for yeah. a year, uh, underperforming pretty substantially. You don't get underperformance in small caps happening for that much longer. It has happened, year and a half, maybe two, but a year is probably on average, so that's number one. Number two, seasonality works in its favor. I think about 80% of the time, uh, going from about November to about March, small cap outperforms. December, not so much. But what if there's a recession? Is that a <laughs> well, the thing about small caps, though, is that they're domestically oriented yeah. on average. These small, small caps right now are better financed than they had ever been, are cheaper maybe than they've ever been. Uh, so, you know, if we get a deep, dark recession, everything's off. I'm not in that camp, so I'll go with the seasonality. I just want to mention December because it's going to be more important for the biotech uh, group tax loss selling. Mm. So in December, you get a bit of a hiccup. Uh, there's been a lot of losses. You can see that underperformance there. So uh, there may be that kind of dislocation through December. Biotech is interesting, uh, though, because really under the hood of healthcare, it's been the star performer, thanks in part to some really uh, outsized move by big players. Like the Biogens. Gilead's been on fire, although it did nothing for about a year and a half. Uh, there's been some big uh, takeovers, a biomed, uh, but this is the small cap biotech. Mm. Not been very good, been a horrible place to be. But again, you've got, um, I haven't had an updated number yet, but substantial amounts of, of cash on the balance sheet, lots of stuff in the clinic in these small cap companies. Uh, and, uh, you know, seasonality is on your side. And this is not like the biotechs when we were talking about them as this exciting roll-up story, M&A driven. No, these, these are, we're talking about yeah. drugs and these pipelines. Are, these, and, yeah. are, these are guys that are in the clinic. Many of these small cap companies already have revenue. They have products that are approved, yeah. they may be extending them, there may be excitement. And I think there's going to be a lot more M&A in the biotech space in 2023. I'm not buying for that because that's a mugs game, but I, I think there's that opportunity. All